Martha here, the Huga Stitcher. Welcome to my home here in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. And I hope you're ready for some cross stitch enthusiasm. I have a really fun episode planned for you today. I've been working on a couple of great projects that I can't wait to share with you. I have um, some stitchy cross stitch haul that I'm excited to share with you as well. And also I have a new stitch along coming up. So lots to talk about. I always start off with book a days because I keep track of all of my stitching in here. And so far, I, I like I mentioned, I have a couple of projects that I've been working on in the beginning of January. And I've been decorating with stickers and keeping track of all of my works in progress. So having fun there. So um, first up, I wanted to share with you Teresa Wentzler. Um, in my last video, I talked a lot about this chart. Uh, this is Lily Maiden. And um, I had a goal for myself. There was a spot I wanted to reach before I put it away again, because I have another Teresa Wensler coming up soon and I wanted to get to a good stopping point. And here's where I've, I've gotten to. I think this is a great, I think this is halfway done. You know, like there's still a lot of full coverage in the center of this design, but it's coming together and um, it's looking beautiful, don't you agree? It looks amazing. So what I did work on was completing the outside of the border down on the bottom half of the design. And I went from this inner border here, I had stopped right here. And so what I did is picked up and went around. And then I did more of these um, rows of stitching. So you'll see some of them are done up here. This is like some specialty stitches um, that will go throughout the whole design which will give it really great dimension. It's not showing up on here, but there is definitely sparkle. Um, there is a little bit of blending filament from Krynik in there. Um, oh, you can catch it every once in a while. There's a little bit in her wings and a little bit in the border. This is gonna be so beautiful. I can't wait to get some more progress on this, but for now, it's going on hold. I did a good, I. I, th I think it's been a whole week that I put into um, Lily Maiden. So time to take a little break and work on some more projects. Um, but before I, I jump to the next one, I wanted to share with you, I have a giveaway. On my last video, um, number one for 2024, I had talked a lot about um, this Teresa Wentzler Lily Maiden pattern, pattern, and I'm doing a giveaway. So if you are interested in this design and wanna stitch it with me, Go check out um, floss tube number one for 2024. I'll link it below and you can enter in the draw on that episode. If you're interested, <laughs> I had received um, some stitchy kindness. Uh, a viewer had reached out to me, letting me know that she had some magazines that had Teresa Wentzler designs in them. And she asked if I wanted them and I was like, yeah, sure. So this was one of the ones that she had given to me and I decided to give that one as a giveaway because I already have that pattern. But she had, you know, sent me this really cute card, really adorable, with a really nice note inside there and um, with some encouragement. And the other patterns that she had gifted me was just Cross Stitch Magazine. And inside this one is, and she even marked where they are, which is so handy. <laughs> This one is English Garden Welcome by Teresa Wensler, which this is another popular design. Um, there's a few of them that are like, you see everybody start. <laughs> and this is, this is one of them. And I'm really excited to have this in my collection now and to be able to dream about stitching this one one day. It's absolutely stunning. What kind of reminds me a little bit of Lily Maiden because there's flowers in there and the border is very simple. Like, I mean, this isn't simple, but this part is. You know, I kind of like that. And I love the scenery. It's really, really pretty. Thank you so much for, for this. And also there was another one that she said, cause I have been showing some interest in Joan Elliott. So this one has a couple of cross stitch uh, Joan Elliott patterns that are Christmas themed. This one is a poinsettia design. How beautiful is that? I absolutely want to stitch that. It's so pretty. Look at her long braid. 
you can just tell it's frosty, right? Like everything that she's wearing, those and her angel wings. Beautiful pops of color. I'm starting to get into Joan Elliott. I have a design, that, um, a Santa that I want to do. And I can't wait to get going on that one because I just want to get a Joan Elliott under my belt and get that experience um, stitching one of her designs. But here's another one. This one's a little stocking. It's an angel Christmas stocking. That's also in the chart, in the uh, magazine here. How beautiful. These are both great. Yeah. So thank you so much, Diana, for this lovely gift. Thank you for thinking of me. And I'm looking forward to sending this off to a, lo a lovely viewer who's interested in stitching Lily Maiden. Next up, I wanted to talk about the stitch along coming up. So uh, my girlfriend and I, Erica, Fibers and Floss Canada, are doing a stitch along, hosting a stitch along called the Year of the Dragon Cell. And we are stitching the Teresa Wensler Storyteller. Erica did a wonderful video talking all about Teresa Wensler, her experience of kidding up her first um, pattern by her and how she did it. And I thought she did a really great job, very thorough. If you're interested in checking out that video, I'm gonna link it below for you. Um, if you're interested in watching that, um, I learned a lot from it. You know, she deep dived into Teresa Wensler world and there was some things I picked up from her video as well that um, really helped me with how I kitted up mine. And um, so the stitch along basically is gonna be starting on Chinese New Year which is this year, February 10th, it's a Saturday. And what we are saying is you can stitch any, any dragon. It doesn't need to be this one. This is an oldie, sometimes hard to find chart, um, but you can stitch any dragon. If you have a pattern in your collection that is, uh, maybe it's something you've already started in the past. Maybe it's a full coverage dragon. Maybe it's um, a, a small dragon inside of a stitch, big stitch, you know? <laughs> Whatever you want, you can, it's something that you could already have started. It's something you could kit up and start with us. Um, we are gonna be hosting the Stitch Along all year. And throughout the year, you'll see my progress on um, the Storyteller. And, oh my gosh, it's amazing. It's beautiful. I can't wait to deep dive into this. But you can stitch on any dragon. So I hope you'll join. I hope you'll find something that is already in your collection, already going, that you can um, use the hashtag Year of the Dragon Sal on Instagram. That's a lot of fun. So over the past couple of days, I have been um, kidding this project up. I had purchased fabric, it arrived, and I am deciding to stitch mine on the called for, which is a 28 count platinum linen, which is absolutely beautiful beautiful color and I have started to um, put together my flosses for this pattern which is also very beautiful <laughs> the colors are amazing I'm really really excited to start this stitch like and kidding it up was was fun as well um, I have never done this before I'm a floss away bag girl <laughs> that's how I keep all of my DMC my master set and as I kit up projects, my mirabilias, I will, I will do it like this, right? I've talked about it many times. That's how I do it. And for this project, I wanted to do it a little bit differently and just to get the experience of doing it this way and see how I like it. So I have, um, I had one of these containers that I used to keep all of my beads in. And um, now that I've found a new way to store my beads, this was empty. So I found a new use for it. Um, this is one of those um, kits that you can put your DMC and your bobbinated floss in. So I've done that. Um, and that was really fun. <laughs> I had a lot of fun. Like, you know when you're in the zone of crafting and it doesn't matter what's going on around you. Like, you're just like, I'm bobbinating floss, labeling and putting it in the box. Um, that was a lot of fun. And I also did this too. So these are the um, Loran MasterCard. So basically it's just a ring, um, a, a card that has spots for rings that you could put in a binder. It also has, um, or you could put ring a ring on it. Um, it also has the spot where you can um, put your floss and label. So what I have done is I went to um, my chart, big long list of DMC. 
And what I did is in the beginning, these are just the symbols that um, don't have any blended colors. And I bobbinated those colors and they're in my box. And then going forward, the rest of them after that are all symbols that require two colors. So I have gone through and did them all in order as on here so that they'll be easy to find. And they're in groupings. Like if you notice this one, this was the first set of colors. So I have imagined this is part of the border where you've got um, those light brown colors. And then the next one is greens. And all of these colors are blended together. So it might be like one strand of this and one strand of that sort of, sort of thing. And then here's some more greens and then going into blues. I think this will be easy to work off of. I hope. If not, I've been having a lot of fun putting it together like this. It kind of reminds me of like dimension kits, how they come. It's kind of fun. So they're all labeled with the colors. And I did like, um, I didn't make the strands too big um, because you're only using one strand, one strand of this and one strand of that um, as a blended color. And yeah, so I didn't make them too long. Look at those beautiful purples and pinks, blues, beautiful. And then last one here, some more pinks. I have some more of these cards left over. Um, you know, they're really inexpensive. It was just a, I, I might do a few more projects like this. Um, we'll see how it goes. So I'm ha I had a lot of fun putting that all together <laughs> that I couldn't wait to share with you all on my experience with that so far. So I'm really, really fun. So I have a project bag that I'm keeping this all in together. So it'll be chart, fabric, a box, and bringing out my Teresa Wensler to work on um, will be really exciting. I can't wait for February 10th to get started. It's gonna be fun. I think I'm going to start um, in the top left-hand corner and get some of this border going and work my way yeah. to the dragon so that I can get, get down into these beautiful colors. We'll see how far I get <laughs> in the first month, but I think I can do that. I think I can do the outline of um, the border and get to the greenery on the dragon. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'll be stitching it um, on this beautiful platinum linen, 28 count. Love this color. Actually, I love platinum. Platinum is like one of my favorite favorite linens because you could stitch pretty much anything on this. If you wanted to stitch a sampler, guaranteed it's going to look good on platinum, you know, um, or you can stitch, the you know, a colorful dragon. You could do um, something spring, something winter, like there's nothing that's not going to look good on platinum. Absolutely love it. I should just buy a big, <laughs> a big old amount, a big old sheet of, um, of platinum linen and always have, um, you know, something to work off of when I need, <laughs> because I feel like a Nora Corbett design, a pixie would look beautiful on, on platinum linen. You could never go wrong. So I have, um, I had purchased some linen and it was, it's been a goal of mine this year. I had a few more Mirabilia charts that um, were gifted to me last year that I wanted to get a start on in 2024 and I had everything. I had the chart. I have the colors. I have the chronic. I have the beads. I'm like ready to go. No, no fabric. No fabric for these ones. And I just was like, I'm going to buy some pieces of fabric so that I can get started on some of these projects. So the first one I wanted to show you, this is Butterfly Fairy which was gifted to me um, by a lovely viewer when I had reached my two year anniversary on floss tube. She reached out to me and said, Samantha, I have this beautiful chart that I think you need in your collection. And she was not wrong. I um, absolutely love this chart. I love butterflies and um, the colors in here are absolutely beautiful. And I had no idea. Every time I had seen this design, online or you know other stitchers stitching it I did not notice that she's holding a wand in her hand and that it I'm always drawn to those if it's a pixie or yeah fairy that holds a wand I'm like well I want to stitch it <laughs> I love the magic element and I didn't know that was in there but isn't she beautiful ah. 
This was a design that was re-released um, for the 25th anniversary. There were like four or five designs that Mirabilia re-released and this was one of them. And I believe it is currently out of print now, even after they re-released it, kind of, you know, they all sold. <laughs> Isn't it pretty? So I bought um, the called for fabric. This is a 32 count country French latte linen by Witchelt. Looks very, very similar to platinum actually. A little more creamier, I guess you would say. Um, stunning. And the feel of this, oh, like <laughs> when I first picked it up for the first time, I was like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to use this. It feels like a lot of, um, you know, which else some of the fabrics that I have stitched Mirabilia's on are like a stiffer, stiffer fabric. This is not, this is really like floppy and lightweight and beautiful. I'm excited to, um, to get going on this one. I have all the colors. Like I said, I've been, you know, I've been working on this last year, getting all the colors um, for this design and I actually need to get some more floss away bags. <laughs> this is the story of my life. I, I always run out of these. I buy like a hundred of them and then a few months later, I'm like, oh, I need more. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, so I need some more. I have all the colors though for this, for this stitch. So that's exciting. Not sure when I'm gonna get um, my first stitches put in, but in 2024, this is happening. It's ready to go. Um, I'm excited. And then this one, um, I'm very close to finishing one of my Nora Corbett um, Bewitching Pixies. And I have a few more. I've, I've stitched three, I'm very close to finishing my third one. And then I have three more patterns. So this one here is Gigi. And I think this is the one I'm drawn to stitching next. I'm pretty sure. Um, I love the broom in this design and the colors. Obviously, they're, they're stunning. And the little black kitty with the long black tail. I love that. I used to have a cat just like that. Her name was Shadow. And she was my first cat that I got, um, you know, moved into my own apartment and got a kitten. And that was Shadow. Had her for almost 20 years. And um, so, yeah, I love, I love that, that she, that, it, you know, my shadow is in there. And then this is another one that has a, another black, little black kitty. This one's Anna. And I thought that this was going to be the one that I'm going to start next, but I think Gigi's winning. I love the broom, but I also love the apple in this design too. So it's going to get stitched one day. And this one, I'm never sure on how to pronounce it. It's Minvera. And from the Bewitching Pixies, she will be my last pixie from this collection. I love the moon and the owl, the little bit of scenery. I don't think all of my other ones are very much like, here's the little Bewitching Pixie. Um, but this one has a little bit of scenery with the, the tree and the leaves and the owl and the moon. That's very cool. So what I needed was some more fabric. I'm stitching them all on the same called for um, milk chocolate 32 count linen. So I just got one more piece um, so I can get started and start one of these this this fall probably, um, but I'm ready to go. I have the fabric now, I have all the colors. I have already in the past, I had gone through all these charts to make sure I had all the colors and all the beading, um, so I'm ready to go. So there's that. One more. I have one more bewitching, I'm uh, not bewitching. This one is the P Pixie Couture Collection. This was also a gift from a viewer last year. Um, Poppy is my sixth pixie and she was missing from my collection. I had, you know, over the years, I've been stitching um, the Pixie Couture Collection since 2000 and eight, 2009, somewhere in there, I had decided I was gonna stitch them. And I had in my head, I wanted to stitch a rainbow of pixies. So I picked, you know, a green one and a yellow one and a purple one. And, and Poppy is the last one that, you know, these have been in print for a long time, but last year Poppy went out of print. And I had made the mistake of not purchasing them all, you know, putting it in my collection. I, it, it was always available, right? So. I learned, I think I learned a lesson there. 
Um, but a viewer had reached out to me and said, Samantha, I have Poppy in my collection. I would love for you to have her. And she completes my set. So I have to get a start on her this year. I'm very close to finishing Bluebell. And when I am done, I'm going to start, um, start this one. So I have, I'm stitching them all on the exact same fabric. This is a 32 count antique white linen. Very simple. Um, you know, these designs are stunning they you know yeah they're all on antique white but the colors in each of them are so beautiful and um, they have lots of sparkle and wings and things like that so this is great i have all the colors i've got the krynik the beads look at those ah i can't, I can't wait i think poppy's actually going to be really easy too and she's the first pixie that um i've ever stitched that's the back view of her like you can still see her face and her shoulder but she this is the back of her and she's sort of on a little bit of an angle showing off of her dress right so oh that's kind of cool I love that okay <laughs> so that's to come in 2024 pretty soon and I have a few other, um, you know, stitchy kindness that I wanted to share with you. Um, these were some lovely floss tubers that had reached out to me and, um, you know, asked for my address and wanted to send me some, you know, Christmas cards and things like that. And I'm really excited. Pam and Steph, when Pam reached out to me saying, can I have your address and, you know, want to add you to the mailing list? And I was like, yeah, sure. And I love this. I think this is so clever of them to do something like this. It's a small gesture of, you know, we're thinking of you. Thank you for watching our channel sort of thing. And um, I love it. I think it's so cool that they did this. this. This made my day when it arrived in the mail. It just literally made my day. And I'm like, I need to do something like this. It's, it's inspiring me. I would love to do something like this next year. I also, so thank you, Pam and Steph. It was really, really fun. And also um, Memphis Sarah E sent me one as well. Now this is a stitch, a picture of a stitch that she stitched. Um, this is Miss Christmas Eve by Mirabilia, stitched by Sarah. How cute, I love that. Thank you, Sarah, your card made my day. And also just recently, this one arrived um, a few days ago. This is from Milka Mega Stitches. She sent me a lovely sparkly card. Um, with a lovely personal note in there with en some encouragement and um, I just really appreciate her friendship and that she was thinking of me. It made my day. <laughs> my mailman must think like, how does like so many people from all over the states, I'm always getting stuff in the mail from all over. <laughs> I wonder what he thinks, right? <laughs> Uh, anyways, so last but not least, this is a really special card that came in the mail. This is from Karen, the Stitching Owl on Floss Tube. She reached out to me as well. Um, she said that she does, and this is really sweet what she does. Um, she has been creating ornaments and completing them and shipping them off to people who she's thinking of. And I was lucky enough to receive this beautiful ornament that Karen made for me and beautifully finished that I did when it arrived I had hanging on my Christmas tree and this is actually one of the first if you can believe it first Christmas ornament with cross stitch that I own and um, it's really really special this was um, a design from modern folk embroidery that she used one of the motifs Quakers and made it into an ornament Karen, thank you so much. This is so lovely. And this is gonna, I'm gonna put this now in with my Christmas ornaments that have been tucked away um, because I'm going to hang this on my Christmas tree every year and think of you and think about Floss Tube and think about, you know, the people we meet, um, you know, through the videos. It's really, really special. So thank you, Karen. Thank you so much. Another parcel had arrived in the mail and this one was from the UK. This is a Luca S box. Luca S had reached out to me uh, wanting to send me one of their, um, their kits so that I could give it a try. And I had received, you know, I got to pick which one that I had liked to start, but inside the box, there were a few other goodies. What was in here was some new thread, 
which is actually super fun. Um, super beautiful colors, bright and vibrant, um, really fun. You know, my daughters and I, um, we cross stitch together sometimes. And some of the projects that we work on are embroidery where you can pick your own colors, feel inspired to stitch what you want. I also have another daughter who makes bracelets and she, like friendship bracelets using floss. So there is always a use for these beautiful colors. We will find something to use with that. And also there are a couple of fun um, cards in here. So here's a little kit that um, comes with the floss, the card, um, everything you need to stitch that beautiful little slice of lemon, I think, lemon or lime, so that you can create it and ship it off to a stitchy friend who you're thinking of, so that's fun. Here's another one, I love this one. This one has coffee on it. Cute. I'm definitely gonna stitch these, these are so fun. And then here's the kit that I had picked out. Um, this one is, a Christmas stitch. I was drawn to this one because of the gingerbread looking styled house. And I love stitching Christmas uh, when it comes to a kit. I don't know. I'm just like, to me, it's just like the time of year to be stitching. And this one is really fun. It has um, gingerbread cookies and cupcakes and candy canes, the ice skates. And I've always wanted to stitch a nutcracker. I've uh, Every time I'm waiting for the perfect design, like a big nutcracker stitch. Um, but yeah, I saw that and I was like, oh, there's a nutcracker. I can stitch that one. So fun, beautiful bird. And the feel of this one is a little like, mm, very like sweet treats and sweet tasting things. And the ice skates are really cute too. I love it. I can't wait to stitch this. Here's all the beautiful colors. The way that Luca S puts together their kits is really fun. It has the symbol from the chart, and then it also has a little hole in the end for your loose threads. Um, but everything is very easy to see, and, and I can't wait. Oh, look at the sparkly floss on there too. I haven't opened this one yet, but it comes with the, you know, the fabric, the needle, everything. It's really exciting. Beautiful colors. Can't wait to rip this open <laughs> and get stitching on it. And where should I start? Like, should I start in the center of the design and do the candles? Should I start at the top and work my way down? I don't know. Should I start with the nutcracker? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, usually I'm a center starter, but I feel like with this one, you could, you could go wherever you'd like, I think. I think you could start at the bottom and work your way up. Start at the top, work your way down. I don't think it's going to matter. Oh, so pretty. Yeah, can't wait to get going on that. Um, this is the second Luca S kit that I own. Last year, I, I had gotten this one. This one is, does it have a name? Birdhouse. That I have opened the package and I have gone through all the colors and I actually um, also found some fabric um, instead of Ada. I want to stitch another even weave because this is a full coverage piece and I can stitch in hand. Um, doing these, like look at the sky. I actually love doing block stitching and when you stitch in hand, you can just, just fly. <laughs> That's how I describe it, you just fly, you just go. Look at the chart, how many stitches across? Okay, here I go. And I love stitching that. And then look at the beautiful detail in this. I've shown this a few times on my channel um, and I haven't started it yet. Like I got too many projects. Um, but I'm excited. I'm still like, I haven't lost my excitement for this stitch. Um, I'm excited to get started on both of these um, designs, hopefully soon, hopefully soon. And then last but not least, I wanted to show you what I am stitching right now. Um, the other project I have been keeping in this beautiful bag that Erica from Fibers and Floss had created um, for this pirate stitch, Treasure Island by Owl Forest Embroidery. It has this cool little back pocket which I keep the chart and my um, magnet board in. So I'm ready to go. This is a free design um, from Owl Forest Embroidery that you can download. It was a stitch along last year and I'm trying to catch up, you know, but I, I think that this stitch I'm gonna carry over this whole year and possibly get a finish on this summer. Um, but because I think it's, you know, a fun summery type stitch, it'd be fun to finish it this July and August. I have it here on my new stand, which I'm gonna reach over and grab. 
Um, I like kind of having this in the video. It's really fun. It's something in the background that you can see. Um, and I can bring it out and show you what I'm, what I'm stitching on. So the stand that I got um, is a Lowry stand I got for Christmas. I asked, you know, asked Santa <laughs> if he would bring me one if I was good this year. And um, I love it. I'm an in-hand stitcher, but I am um, loving this. The past couple years during my floss tube journey, I have been trying to experience different things, different, different designers, different ways of kitting up your project, different ways of stitching. I stitch in hand, I stitch in a Q-snap sometimes. Um, and I'm really enjoying the whole process of doing things differently on different projects. You know, on a Teresa the Wensler, I always use a Q-snap um, because it's on an even weave, there's specialty stitches, and I wanna be able to have that fabric nice and tight. And um, yeah, that's why I really was thinking, I, if because I'm holding this in my hands, it would be nice to have a stand um, to use while I'm stitching one of the projects like that. And this was another project that I had since the beginning used a Q-snap with. And I think it's because I got this really cute needle minder with the kit, um, you know, with the boat on there. So cool. So I was like, well, why don't you put it on, you know, put it on a Q-snap and use the needle minder. And um, I'm really enjoying this process too. I had, I, there's not a lot to show you on this side, but on the other side of the design, I have completed um, another one of the, you know, pirates. And um, now I'm starting on the other side. So this is part 11. And um, yeah, I would say I'm getting close to, I've, I've considered this a halfway middle project and I want to get it into the ending stages so that I can consider it an end, you know, almost finished project and um, finish it up this year. It'll be really, really exciting. Beautiful colors, right? Up here, I've shown this before, the full, you know, I don't want to take it out of the Q-snap because I'm stitching on it. <laughs> so if you want to see where I am, um, my floss tube number one, I did a whip parade where I showed every single project and where I am. And um, you can go and check that out if you haven't seen it yet. I will link it below for you. There we go. This is what I'm stitching on this week. I want to get part 11 done. And after that, the next part of the stitch is part 12 and that's part of the island i'll show you this is sort of where it's at right now part 11 is stitching the middle the out part the outer border of the island in the center of the design that's exciting i can't wait to get that in there that's going to be really fun and um there's a couple of parts part 12 is the outline 13 is more of like the middle Part of the design so there's some mountains and some trees and things like that and then um, there's obviously some spots in the design where they've left out and now that the whole um, chart has been released you'll see that there's some X's on the design where it's like you know X marks the spot of where the treasure is so it's kind of fun I can I can add those in when I'm working on you know the complete design when I get to the island that's gonna be so fun so that's where I am on that one. I think that's everything for today that I have on my table here. I hope you will join um, the Year of the Dragon Sal. Find something in your collection um, that has a dragon in it and jump in at any time. You can um, start on February 10th if you like and it's going to run all year so you can jump in and jump out whenever you want. Whenever you feel like inspired to stitch on your dragon stitch you can bring it out and share your progress on Instagram using the hashtag Year of the Dragon Cell. So I look forward to seeing everybody starts their progress where they are, and I will be doing the Teresa Wensler dragon stitch. So looking forward to that and doing my first to Teresa Wensler dragon. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everyone. I hope you enjoyed your time today. I will see you again in a few weeks. Take care. Bye-bye.